Welcome to Electron Online. In our second problem in this set, we have the same setup as before. We have a single mass, two springs attached to the mass, and those springs are attached to solid anchors that do not move. And now again, we're going to push the mass to one direction, we let go, and it's going to oscillate back and forth. The difference here is that the springs are not equal. This one has spring constant K1, and this has spring constant K2. Let's assume for a moment that K2 is larger than K1, so the force of the pull of this spring when the object is moved to the left is going to be greater than the push of this spring. The force here is going to be minus K1x, and the force there is going to be minus K2x, so this will be a larger force. But since they're acting in the same direction, they're going to be additive, algebraically additive, because there's no other components than the x-direction components, so the total force on it is simply going to still be F1 and F2. Why not call these F1 and F2? So you can see that those are going to be additive when both forces are acting to the right, when the object's to the left, and when the object's to the right, both forces will be acting to the left. We're still trying to find the velocity as a function of position, the acceleration as a function of position, the position as a function of time, and the natural frequency of the system with two springs that are of different spring constant, K1 and K2. Again, we're going to start off by finding the total energy in the system when we move the object in one direction to its maximum amplitude, A. And so we can then say that the total energy E total is equal to the initial energy that we put into the system, which is equal to one half k1 x squared. In this case, since x is equal to a, I should write one half k1 a squared plus one half k2 a squared, because each one of these springs has a different spring constant. So we can actually factor out a one half. Well, let's see, 1 half a squared, so this can be written as, or let me factor out a k1 plus k2. It'll be k1 plus k2 times 1 half a squared. So that would be the total energy starting when we push the block out to one direction, and then we'll let go. When the block is oscillating back and forth, the total energy will then be subdivided into potential and kinetic energy. So at any moment in time, the total energy will be equal to the sum of the potential energy plus the kinetic energy of the system. Now the potential energy will be the sum of the potential energies of the two springs. So it will be 1 half K1x squared plus 1 half k2x squared, that will be the total potential energy at any point in time or at any position x. When x is zero, there's no potential energy, and when x is the maximum, you have the maximum potential energy, plus the kinetic energy, which will be one half mv squared. And so what we're going to do now is take this part of the equation and solve that equation for v as a function of x. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm not, that's not an equation. I'm not done yet. I got a little ahead of myself. That's the total energy of the system, and we're going to set that equal to the initial energy, which is right here, which is k1 plus k2 times 1 half a squared. There we go. That's the equation I'm thinking about. That's the equation we're going to solve for v as a function of x. So the first thing we want to do is move everything else over to one side. So what that means is we can write 1 half mv squared is equal to, when I move these over to the other side, that becomes negative. So we have k1 plus k2 times 1 half a squared. And when I move this over, that becomes negative, but it can also factor out a 1 half x squared. So this would be minus k1 plus k2 times 1 half x squared. I guess I don't need parentheses here. I'll just leave it like that. All right, and now when I look at that, I could first of all multiply everything by 2. When I do that, I get rid of all the 1 half, so those are gone. And next, I can factor out a k1 plus k2, and this can be written as mv squared is equal to k1 plus k2 times a squared minus x squared, and then finally divide both sides by m. We have v squared is equal to 
K1 plus K2 divided by M times A squared minus X squared. And now when I take the square root of both sides, I get V, which is now a function of X, is equal to the square root of K1 plus K2 over M times A squared minus X squared. Notice that this looks very similar to what we had before. What we had before, when the two springs were equal, and I think this pen is dying on me, so let me try this one here. So what we had before, we had the velocity as a function of x, when both springs were equal to one another, we had it as 2k over m, because they were equal. But if they're different, like this, then it becomes k1 plus k2, we simply add the k's, divided by m. Of course, if there's only one spring, it would be k over m. So you see the similarities in that. Again, we realize now that this here represents the natural frequency of the system, so we can write that omega sub naught is equal to the square root of the sum of the two k's, the spring constants, divided by the mass of the system. Also, if we want to calculate the acceleration as a function of position, we can say that f equals ma, starting with Newton's second law, and in this case, f will be the sum of these two. It will be f1 plus f2, so it's f1 plus f2 equals ma. And if we add those together, we get minus k1x minus k2x equals ma. Or I can then say that a is equal to, when I factor out an x, I can say that's minus x times k1 plus k2 over m. Or I think they'd rather have that with the case first. So we write A is equal to minus the quantity K1 plus K2 times X over M. And here we realize that this is the acceleration as a function of position. And that's the third equation we're looking for. Again, we want to write also the position as a function of time. For that, we're going to use the sine function. We can say that X as a function of time is equal to the amplitude times sine of omega t and omega here is going to be this omega in this particular case because the spring constants are not the same. And that's how we find the various equations that explain mathematically the simple harmonic motion when we have a single mass attached to two springs that are pushing and pulling at the same time. And that's how it's done.